So, do you want to know how to get book reviews going from 2017 into 2018? Stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale, and if you want to learn tips and strategies for publishing your own books, make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you get all my latest videos and live streams such as this. This is a special Tuesday night edition. We're typically on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but we're moving to this day because here in the United States, it's going to be Thanksgiving on this Thursday. So in any event, we're testing out a few things. Uh, those of you that are actually... Uh, Subscribe to my email newsletter. You probably already know I address the issue. We're having some latency problems. We got great quality video. We got great audio, but they're just not matching up. So I spent about a half hour trying to tool with this in private. So you guys aren't having to sit here and worry about all this latency stuff. So uh, before we get into things, I just had to address that. Today's stream is brought to you in part by AppSumo's briefcase. Listen. I've talked about AppSumo ad nauseum. I love their products, they're awesome. They have something that's called the Briefcase. And Briefcase is a monthly membership where they provide a, um, a number of the greatest services that you can kind of get on the planet for your entrepreneurial endeavors. So you wanna make sure that you get that. Go to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash briefcase. So, um, don't know how I found my way here. I'm glad you found your way here nonetheless. So in any event, uh, so check out AppSumo by all means, that's great. And for those of you that are interested in the upcoming course release as well as the coaching program for self-publishing, you wanna head over to publishwithdale.com, sign up your email and name. This is only gonna be for notification purposes. You're not gonna get any kind of marketing material. You're not gonna be getting any kind of free lead magnets. This is simply to show your interest in the course as well as the coaching program. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else here. We just started, so greetings from Ireland. It's awesome to see you from Ireland. I, I appreciate you popping in. All right, so we're going to be talking about how to get some reviews for your books. And uh, please, if you have questions, comments, and concerns, do me a favor. Start dropping them on into the chat because my wife and I are going to be talking a little bit. Now, um, I've already introduced myself. This is... I'm Kelly. This is Kelly. I'm glad she told you her name because I, I forgot about it for a minute there. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? So let's see here. In any event, um, so let's get down to the, the core content of things. And it's going to be getting book reviews. Before we do, why are book reviews so important when you're publishing? What if I want to buy something? I can't think of the word right now. I want to see if people already have reviews on it and to know if it's good. Okay. Well, what about for you folks? Why are reviews important, not just to books, but to products in general? For instance, I was on with my brother, Bionic Vapor. He was helping me out in finding and choosing some of the best computer things. Uh, you know, I, I sound really smart when it comes to uh, computer stuff. They're computer things. Uh, but one of the things he did, he checked the reviews. Why do you folks check reviews? I know for me, and this is, I'm kind of backwards when it comes to looking at reviews. I typically look to see what the bad reviews are for something. Like we'll go to a restaurant for instance, and I'll get on Yelp and I'll look up the bad reviews because I want to see what I, what's the worst case scenario for me. You know, what can I anticipate? Is there going to be a grumpy server? Am I going to be dealing with some garbage? So... Um, and uh, by, all, by all means, you know, keep manning the chat here. Uh, my wife is watching for thangs. Yes, for thangs. So in any event, uh, talking about these book reviews, it's just, it's, I, tr I sometimes seem to minimize this in, in a, a lot of my videos before, you know, this live stream. And I even discussed it inside Emeka's um, chat one day. And the thing is, reviews are still important. Please, don't get me wrong, but I think that sometimes 
people get really, they sensationalize it. They really try to make it the focal point of their business. Yes, you should be getting reviews for your books. Am I right? Yes, but there's different ways of doing it. Correct, correct. Um, I'm going to try to to pull up the chat here. Um, bear with me just a moment here, folks. Um, While you're doing that, have you ever heard of huge orange book marketing services? And do you think they're worth it? I have not heard of huge orange book marketing. If I happen to have any of my admins in here, if you guys can look that up and drop that in the chat, this is not my endorsement, but uh, definitely look into it. We're going to talk a little bit about something like that in, in, in due time, but we're going to focus on the book review aspect of things today because there are actually some things I actually unearthed in researching for today's uh, live stream. I think that you folks are going to really want to know about. First things first, and we're gonna get to this right away. I'm gonna say it off the bat, don't book review swap. Book review swaps consist of me, and let's say Kelly's writing a book. She hands me her book, I hand my book over to her, and we exchange reviews, okay? This is an old antiquated system, and Amazon's really starting to crack down, and um, I lost my privileges for reviewing all products on Amazon because of this practice. And the funny thing is, is I had a really good reviewers rank at one point or another, but since then, I've lost those privileges. And here's the thing is, I actually had a few other things that started disappearing more recently. So for instance, I didn't just lose my privileges to review, I was actually able to go in and comment on reviews at least until more recently. As you know, Amazon goes through, they tweak things, they fix things as they go along. Well, I think they discovered, oh, well, this guy lost his review privileges, he can't comment on things, so they took that away from me. And then here's the other, here's the kicker. I can no longer do Amazon giveaways now. It's literally like, I, because of violation of Amazon community guidelines, they've determined that I am no longer able to do anything like that. So just want to give you fair warning. And even if you are hiring a virtual assistant, remember, if they're doing quid pro quo with your book, whose account is that in? So you got to kind of just keep that in mind. Um, any event, um, keep the chat coming. I can see my wife's over here. She's tapping away madly and such. Uh, remember, if you've got a question and you want to get priority on it, click that little dollar symbol that's inside the chat right there. It's called Super Chat. That'll put you up to the top of the queue. And we'll make sure to talk about you first here. So we're going to get to the questions in a little bit because I want to make sure we get the core content because there's no sense in us repeating ourselves. Right. Makes sense? So uh, is there anything that you want to add uh, b as before we go on? She's enjoying herself with the chat here. <laughs> There's just a lot of comments, not tons of questions yet, just lots of comments. Awesome. That's good. You, you guys keep chatting. What would you say I got distracted? Darren Wiggins. If uh, Darren Wiggins needs to get on this live stream one of these days. Am I not right? Yes. He does. Yes. Don't be a jerk. I had um, to keep it PG. I'm sorry, what did you say again? I would just keep getting distracted Is there anything that you want to friends. add to... to yeah, you're, she's loving the, 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 stream, uh, the, the chats here, guys. And you guys keep it coming, please, by all means. And I'm going to tell you guys this. In the chat, I'm throwing them under the bus. Darren Wiggins is a great person to talk to, okay? So ask questions of Darren. I'm telling you, he's probably one of my, my uh, best buds at, that's uh, on here, along with, of course, Dog Dad and Anthony's on here. So in any event, let's talk about what are the Amazon community guidelines. Now, this has changed, and I really recommend, if you're watching this after tonight, let's say a few months from now, it's always a good idea, Google up Amazon community guidelines just to make sure you're in the, in the, the right, okay? So... Essentially, I'm just going to kind of go through here. The very first thing that a lot of people don't know is there's eligibility requirements. You actually have to spend money on Amazon at some point. It used to be that you didn't have to spend any money, correct? Correct. Now you got to do $50, correct? I don't know. Okay, well, let's take a look at the community guidelines. That's why I brought up my cheat sheet here, guys. So, um, yes, it says you must have spent at least $50 on Amazon.com using a valid credit or debit card. Prime subscriptions and promotion discounts don't qualify towards the $50 minimum. 
In addition to contributing to Spark, you must also have a Prime subscription. Uh, free trials do not qualify. You do not need to meet this requirement to read content posted by other contributors or post customer questions, create or modify profile pages, lists, or registries. So just keep that in mind. If you happen to be reaching out to somebody and you want to get into the book review, so let's just say, for instance, I run into somebody at the library and uh, I'm doing a signing or something like that and they want to give me a review. Well, here's the fact. They might have bought the book off of me, but in reality, if they've never made a purchase on Amazon, they're probably not going to be able to, not probably, they won't be able to make to put a review for your book uh, until they've made that $50 threshold. I think it was because the barrier of entry was raised and why would the barrier of entry be raised? Probably because Amazon doesn't want bad people reviewing. Bad people I'm reviewing. trying to keep it PG. What What was happening before that they that they did that, oh, would you scammers. think? Oh, scammers. You can, because even, even when you spend money on Amazon, you can still review a product you've never used before in your life. But having that $50 purchase kind of eliminates those scammers because Amazon probably thinks if you're willing to spend $50, you must have some legitimacy to your review. Right, so. exactly. Well, because I think before what was happening is people were outsourcing virtual assistants and uh, William May, it's good to see you there, buddy. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, and happy happy Thanksgiving there, and Black Friday. There was one point where you could just hire a virtual assistant that virtual assistant had a team of virtual assistants or people within their network and they would just reach out and they would just fluff up a person's reviews. Well, you can still with, do that, but the VAs have to spend $50 right. and they'll probably get their account banned. It, exactly. And, and, and there are plenty of virtual assistants that are willing to do that for you. Don't get me wrong. They'll find a way to get a profile, you know, to spend that $50 because they'll probably end up making much more than that. And of course, if you're spending $50, you're getting $50 worth of products. Yeah. So, all right. So there's the eligibility. Um, uh, you got to be helpful and relevant. I mean, this is really one of those cases. It's kind of, it, it really, it, be mindful of the book reviews that are coming on your stuff. For instance, um, someone said the button didn't work on their Kindle device for one of Omeka's uh, books. And he was infuriated. He reached out to them and they pretty much gave a like a, well, everybody's entitled to their opinion. He's like, no, your button not working is not my book's fault. However, if you downvote it enough, you'll probably get it removed on its own course. Correct. And, and that's also just a great one. It seems like we kind of rabbit trail just a little bit. Remember the upvote and downvote, okay? Anytime you see a review, there's thumbs on it. Now, they switched it to thumbs. I thought I didn't see it before. But in any event, when you go onto your product page and you go into your reviews, there's a thumbs up and thumbs down for was this review helpful? Remember this. If you want to suppress a specific review that you don't agree with, hit that thumbs down. Because otherwise, it's going to go up to the top of the pile and that's going to be the first thing someone's going to see. It's going to be that black mark on your eye right away. Um, I can go into that in a little bit later, just we can double back around if you guys want to ask questions about that. I'd be willing to kind of tell you exactly how to handle that in the most professional way, but not being a scammer about it. Uh, let's see here. Respect others. Go figure. You can't go on to the reviews if you disagree with somebody and start trolling them. Um, now there's obviously, we're just going to get this out of the way. We understand that there are exceptions to the rule. But don't be that one person that goes, well, everybody else is doing it. Well, just don't do it. Don't go on and troll. You can disagree with somebody, but I think that you can disagree with them in a tactful way. So protect your account that way. Uh, and of course, don't you know get people to... You're really excited about that chat, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm just getting it's distracted just... <laughs> with all my friends. This is awesome. She's, she's loving it here, guys. This Tuesday edition, man, it's popping here today. I had trolls attack a hot topic book on politics, but thankfully I put the word out and got some positive reviews to balance it out. Just checked again, troll reviews now gone. See, it wins in the long term. It is If you get enough um, downvotes on a particular review, it, it you know, they'll, they'll get pulled off. And sometimes if somebody really, if it's, if it's just an out and out egregious and, and just spiteful review, um, some people could even report abuse and have that mm -hmm. review uh, revoked. And here's the thing is, person gets enough abuse reported on them, 
goodbye review privileges and you know forget it so um sexual content wow gosh that was gonna be surprising here um we just lost monetization here by the way folks because i just said sexual content twice so uh some products containing sexual content and some sex and sensuality products are permitted to be sold on amazon we encourage users to express their opinions about those products some sexual content such as nudity and sexually explicit images or descriptions is restricted because audiences within our community may be sensitive to that content so if you're reviewing your erotica book or you're having somebody review it pg remember if grandma's going through this or if a eight-year-olds going through this they need to be able to read these reviews and not have it completely explicit explicit um let's see here additional guidelines for customer reviews i know you guys are probably like he's just reading right from these things but it just kind of keeps me on track here for you guys if your review is removed or rejected because it does not comply with our guidelines concerning promotional content you may not resubmit on the same product even if the resubmitted review includes different content so if you ever get a review removed don't play with it guys it's, it's literally just not worth it um, reviews may only include URLs or links to other products sold on Amazon. Okay. Um, there you go. So that way you're not putting your website. I know Kelly wants to put on her, you know, her website stuff. No, I'm good. All right. Um, here's an interesting one. Customers can submit five non Amazon verified purchase reviews each week. You ready for that? So five reviews if they haven't purchased something before so that means for instance a lot of these VAs that are going out and shooting out a bunch of unverified purchased reviews in other words they haven't bought the book they're just blindly putting on a review maybe they purchased the product somewhere else in theory um, but for the most part, you need to know this is you can only have five. This is one of the reason, another reason why I say virtual assistants may not work for these purposes because if they start kind of going through and they do like 10, 20, 30 of these non-verified purchase reviews, what do you think is going to happen? And here you've paid this virtual assistant to get these reviews on your account and they're going to disappear, of course. Um, this uh, policy does not apply to Vine reviews, which by the way, Vine reviewers are hand-picked reviewers through Amazon. I don't know the full details on getting that. Um, when we find unusually high numbers of reviews for a product posted in a short period of time, we may restrict the number of non-Amazon reviewed verified purchase reviews on that product. You catch that part? That was an interesting, oh, really? So if they see you're getting tons and tons and tons of reviews, so if you're just getting it loaded up. So for instance, this is something I tell people in, in their launches, is it's okay to get your ARC team all in order, your advanced reader copy team all together to do reviews, but for crying out loud, don't cue them up to just down, just dropping down, you know, review after review on your first day out. It's important to kind of make sure that that stuff trickles out. Now, you don't need to micromanage or cue them up on when they should drop it or whenever, but just let them know gently, hey, the book's going to be out the 5th of December, okay? All right, anything you want to add to that? Nope. And you may not manipulate the Amazon verified purchase badge, such as offering special pricing to reviewers or reimbursing reviewers. Remember that. I've seen some people that want to reimburse people that review. Remember, that is a paid review. It is out and out not allowed. You should not be paying people to do your reviews. Um, it's just, I mean, it just makes sense because what's to stop somebody from saying, for instance, I can go, hey, you know, I'll pay you $50 to give me a good review. I mean, she's probably gonna give me a beaming review, something that's very biased. Um, so go through these uh, guidelines here, folks. I can go piece by piece, but I just hit some of the uh, uh, things that are most important. All right, here's a couple questions. Are we getting any questions yet inside the chat? Yes. Okay. Raw, raw dog. 
Uh, and opinions of the masters. I that might be us, might be you. <laughs> Uh, what's more important, spending time getting reviews or moving on to the next book? Wow. Um, I honestly think that there there needs to be a balance. Your next book is going to be the thing that's going to rise the tide and build a larger audience. But in the same instance, there needs to be at least a little bit of a, de- a balance. So... Remember, as you're writing your, your next book, you should already be setting up an advanced review copy team. So that way, when your final draft is starting to wrap up, you're sending it out to those people, those beta readers, the, the people that are going to be able to let you know how things are going. So to me, I think you need to find a balance. It's not like an either or. You need to find a little bit of time that you can be able to do that. Um, this is speaking to newbie self-publishers. So if you're new to the business, then yeah, that should be a practice. But for the most part, for someone like me, where I, I can literally just launch my next book and not have to sweat too much on the reviews, um, then, then it's just fine. So it does get to the point where you really just focus on your next book. Great question. Uh, any other ones before I grab one here on, on here? Uh-huh. I'm going to give you guys some aha movements. And for you too, Darren Wiggins, I, I see you. Well, Shireen asks, what if we publish? She's new to the channel. I don't know if she's asking the chat or asking us. Um, how do reviews work in Google? That is a great question. I, I really don't honestly know. Um, I, I try to be as transparent with you. I, actually, I, I stay as transparent and honest with you guys as possible, sometimes to a fault. I really don't know. I'm going to say this, that I'm loving Google Play. Guess who got Google Play? I did, and so did Anthony. Anthony, congrats. Awesome. That's so cool. Google Play, by the way, folks, you're hearing it here first. They're allowing select authors distribution. Go to them. If you've been using Pronoun, I would really recommend go to Google Play. Um, I love it. Like, for instance, one of my books just yesterday, how many did it say? Like 240 downloads of one it particular book? It was a book. triple digits. That's it was, I know. It was stupid. Like, I can't tell you how awesome Google Play is. Uh, but I'm not really sure how that would work. I'm sure as reviews pretty much work across most any platform, it does help in search engine indexing. So for instance, if you get a review on there, what's going to end up happening is that's going to be indexed over to a search engine. So someone says, uh, I love the 90 day home workout plan. It was great. Five stars. Awesome. I throw babies up in the air whenever I'm excited about it. So, um, and that's going to be extra leverage when it comes to discoverability. So at least in that regards, um, and if, if I have an SEO expert on here, please correct me if I'm wrong, but reviews will probably help you. And since Google is one of the largest search engines in the world, um, that's probably a good idea. So I'm glad you brought that up. We can speculate till the cows come home. Um, I'm really not too sure if there's any other questions. Awesome. Remember, guys, if you got questions, drop them inside the chat here. Uh, I hated that pronoun shutting down. Monique, I agree with you. Actually, didn't you see me like I was like sobbing over here at my desk when I found out? No. Actually, no. I She was right in the middle of a coaching call with somebody, by the way. And I, I came in. I was like, this is bad. And she's like, what? I'm like, pronoun shutting down. She's like, get out of here. It was a coaching call I spent lots of money on. And she yeah. did. She spent a lot of money on that one. Um, can I write a customer review of my own book? Who's got the answer? What do you think? Yes or no? What was that? Can you write a customer review for your own book? No. No? No. What do you guys think? Is that right? Can you be able to write your own customer review? Show of hands. How many people have done that? How many people have tried to do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, I, I did try probably on my first book and the review, uh, I think disappeared right away. Um, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, it says, no, you can't write a review of your own book, but there are other ways to communicate with your readers on Amazon. Please visit our author central help page to learn how to benefit from the book description, editorial reviews, and more about the author sections of your book's detail page. This is probably the most underutilized tool in Amazon's arsenal, Amazon Author Central. If you don't have that for a particular brand or any kind of avatar or pen name or even your own, you need to get that ASAP. It's another way, once again, indexing that. You're getting it to where you're putting another thing 
another stake in the ground. It's another way of listing your content in another direction here. And the cool thing is, you can actually hit the follow on that. So you can even call to action on that. Hey, if you like my books, go to Amazon and click the follow button. So that way you're notified about any time my books come out. That thing is awesome and which, by the way, as a side note, if you do an Amazon giveaway, I do recommend this, by the way. Um, you can run a giveaway. Let's say you have a 99 cent ebook. You purchase it for 99 cents, okay? And then you run a giveaway, let's say on Twitter or you run a giveaway somewhere. Well, at any rate, there is a way that you can just share the link and people can follow. They can just click the follow button on your Amazon author profile and that way you start to really build that up. Now, you're gonna get a lot, get a lot of what my brother likes to call giveaway whores. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna lose monetization on that one, but oh well, we're just gonna go ahead and get that, get that out of the way. Yes, you're gonna run into that, but I think if you got good quality content and you can grab people's attention, it's gonna stop them dead in their tracks and hopefully get it to where they will be more invested once when you uh, publish your next book. Are authors allowed to review other authors' books? What do you think? No. What do you guys think? This is gonna shock you. Well, then I'm wrong. <laughs> yes, authors can. Authors are welcome to submit customer reviews unless the reviewing author has a personal relationship with the author of the book being reviewed or was involved in the book's creation process. So if, if so, that author isn't eligible to write a customer review for that book. Please review our guidelines, yada, yada. So yes, you can write it as long as it's not in a swap style fashion. So for instance, um, there are a number of indie authors that I really enjoy. I couldn't, for instance, do one for Kevin Tomlinson. That wouldn't be a good idea. He and I have a personal relationship, and if for some odd reason they tie the two of us together, that review's pulled down, and I could lose my reviewing privileges, or even Kevin could do that, and that's not a good thing. However, in instances, let's say, oh gosh, there's a couple horror novelists that I've, I've really got into lately that are indie authors. Uh, I, they don't know me from Adam. Um, and this is probably why it's because I can't remember their names right now, but there's a, one of them that I really just enjoy his series. But in any event, um, that one would definitely be passable. So don't be afraid to give reviews of your favorite indie authors. Um, it just gets a little bit hairy when you start to know them. Any other questions as we're rolling along? Um, I don't think so. It's all just comments. I love that somebody did say yes in the comments. So um, you get a gold star. You get a gold star on that one. All right, you ready? Can I ask my family to write a customer review for my book? No. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Can you ask? I, I think we can. Should you ask? It probably should be the, the, the better question. Come on, Amazon. Get your editor on this one. So we don't allow individuals who share a household with the author or close friends to write customer reviews for that author's book. Customer reviews provide unbiased product feedback from fellow shoppers and aren't to be used as a promotional tool. Your family and friends are welcome to share their enthusiasm for your book through our customer discussions feature. Interesting. So you've got the customer discussions feature. Um, where can that be found? Uh, I don't do much with reviews. but. No. Do you like blueberry pie? Do I like blueberry pie? Yeah, I do. Okay. Heck yeah, I do. So, um, <laughs> Darren, why? Why, dude? <laughs> There's no questions. Uh, can I pay for someone to write a customer review for my book? What do you think? You can tell my wife's not hearing on that question. No, you can't pay for that. Yes, you cannot pay for it. Look. <laughs> I made her look, made her look. Yes, you cannot. No, uh, we don't allow any form of compensation for a customer review other than a free copy of the book provided up front. If you offer a free advanced copy, it must be clear that you welcome all feedback, both positive and negative. If we detect that a customer was paid to write a review, we'll remove it. The only type of paid review, here we go. You ready for this? The only type of paid review that Amazon supports is an editorial review. An editorial review is more formal evaluation of a book, usually written by an editor or expert within a genre, but can also be written by family and friends. If you received an editorial review of your book that you'd like to post to the editorial review section of your book's detail page, go to Authors Central. 
Huh, funny thing. So there are actually services out there that have been around for a long time that do provide reviews. Uh, just be prepared. And uh, unfortunately, one's escaping my mind right now that is just, it's been running longer than the Kindle business has been around, um, you know, for decades. And uh, just, you wanna research any company that is going to provide a review in exchange for some sort of payment. There's gonna be some out there that go, uh, well, Amazon allows for it, or we have approval. Listen, at the end of the day, they're gonna have your money, okay? And you need to make sure not only that that person's good through them, but you need to cross check that with Amazon. Go to them and say, I found this service at suchandsuch.com. Is this okay for me to get a review? Is, or does this is this outside of the bounds of review guidelines? Because uh, one of the worst things for you to do is spend $500 to get 30 reviews of a particular book from some service only to find out that it was black hat and you get your account banned. I don't want that to happen. So uh, I see you, she's madly typing over here, having some fun. Chat's blowing up. With I love you friends. guys. Uh, what do you think about the people on YouTube that are still pushing shade review practices? What do I think about those guys? They'll get what they deserve. It's it's going to come in due time. The thing is, is, a lot of people are just so steadfast to what they've been doing for so long that they don't realize the danger that they're putting themselves and other people into. And I'm not going to name names or say anybody specific, but there was one coach in particular that was teaching a practice that was bad. And people's counts were being banned left and right. But here's the funny thing. You ready for this? This coach is still around to this day. Thankfully, this coach abandoned that practice, but it was too late for some of her students. And that to me sucks. That sucks. You know, because at the end of the day, if you're teaching people certain practices, you need to be held accountable for things like that, especially if they get themselves up to a point where they're relying on this as an income. So that's why, and I even, I encourage you to even question the information that I give you. Uh, although I'll tell you all the stuff that I've been giving you guys so far, I'm literally reading it verbatim. You could tell I'm reading it verbatim. So can you ask to review and return for a freebie? Um, you can't, here's, here's specifically, and I said this in one of my videos before, and I had them kind of clarify it for me. You can no longer ask for an honest review in exchange for a complimentary copy. In fact, your reviewers should no longer state that. It, they should not say it, otherwise it will be taken down. I have some reviews that are still hanging out there with that old methodology. The thing is you can provide a complimentary copy, and this is my recommendation, is you don't put that person to a position that's going to endanger their account. Just explain to them, you know, some reviewers that are probably, you know, used to this, they probably don't even need to be trained up. But, um, you know, just explain to them, hey, look, here's a complimentary copy of my book. I'm hoping that I can get a good amount of reviews that are honest. I didn't, I didn't ask for a review. All I just said is I'm hoping for some honest reviews. So that's really what it comes down to. This is speculation, and I'd love to hear from you inside the chat and those of you that are watching on the replay. What do you think? What's the safest way to go about this? I know it seems silly for us to be talking about this in this in this day and age, but it's a fact. We They don't want us asking for reviews anymore. So if we can't ask for reviews, then what do we do? To me, I just would hand over. I'd say, you know, here's my book. Um, you know, it's a complimentary copy. I hope that you enjoy it. You know, if you don't, sorry to hear that. Um, and it'd be awesome to get some honest feedback from you. Boom. I mean, there's just a way to kind of do that. So the the old methodology of contacting some reviewers. So if you click on a review, let's say, for instance, I'm in health, health and fitness. I can go to, say, Christmas Abbott's latest book. I'll go through her reviews and look for the four and five star reviews because you don't, don't want to be obviously clicking on a one or two star because there's clear that they, they have a very high you know, um, uh, what's the word? They're picky, so or they might even be trolls. So you wanna look for the four and five star reviews. Make sure that the reviews look good, that they read good. You don't wanna have some complete mutant that's gonna post up, yeah, this is not good. 
nah. Now let's go ahead and pass up, pass on that. So you'll click on their name and it'll go over to their profile. And typically all you have to do is just show more and some of them will actually provide their email and even welcome and encourage complimentary copies or complimentary products. And they, they love to review certain things. Just fair warning, I'm gonna tell you this right now, there are some reviewer profiles that say, I don't want any more books, please don't send them. So just don't even waste your time on things like that. There's some software out there right now that does detect some of these emails in advance and they'll actually will um, scrape the Amazon marketplace for four and five star reviewers. I know one of them that I've used in the past was KBook Promotions. Um, I'm not gonna give you guys an affiliate link at this point, you can just look it up. But KBook Promotions is uh, one of my buddies, D1 Bainey actually had that out and uh, they could actually find and scrape all the email addresses. But herein lies the issue is, uh, you get these emails without sight unseen, without seeing what their profile is. And I think that if you're going to get a person to do a review, do a little bit of due diligence because it's better that you get one good quality reviewer as opposed to 10 not so good because if you're sending them complimentary copies of your ebook or of even worse yet, your paperback, you're probably stuck with this. I mean, what was the one time I think I sent out 50 paperback copies of a Way book? Way too many. I sent out 50. It was easily 50. And I probably got a dozen reviews from those people. And all of them agreed to it. All of them like, oh yeah, yeah, we'll take the, the, the complimentary copy. Thanks, appreciate it guys. So somewhere in the world, a half price bookstore, I'm sure, they probably just like, this schmuck. They probably took my uh, book, they got it for 50 cents over half price books and they got themselves a little extra cash for you know, me bugging them. Uh, Anthony wants to know what's good with the course, man. It's coming along, my friend, and I appreciate you you uh, staying to me on this one right here. The course is coming for those of you that are interested in the course and as well as the coaching program. You want to go to publishwithdale.com, enter your email and your name. Don't forget your name. If I don't see a name, I'm throwing your email out because, quite frankly, I want to have an actual interaction between one person and the other. So this is not going to be for any mail-out purposes. I'm only going to be communicating with the people that are interested in the course as well as the coaching program. You go to publishwithdale.com and just enter your email and your name and literally it's just a notification. Um, Monique wants more colors for your t-shirts. She got three in black. She likes the colors orange, yellow, and pink. Oh, okay, awesome, thanks. I appreciate the tips. Uh, you know, um, Monique, just do me a favor, drop me a line at dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com and if you're here in the United States, I'll just go ahead and send you one, how about that? And um, I just need to know which, which design you like. Um, everybody's going to be like, where's my free shirt? She said it first. Uh, you know that all you need to do is head over to Amazon.com and you just search up in uh, clothing. You're just going to search up self-publishing with Dale L. Roberts brand. That's right. Self-publishing with Dale L. Roberts brand. And it'll pull up all my shirts. I think I have about, I'd say 50 or 60 designs at this point, uh, including... This one right here, eat, sleep, publish, repeat. So, um, a customer review is missing from my book's detail page. What happened? Has this happened to you before? Have you had reviews just disappear? Sure. Why? What happened? It went bye-bye. <laughs> it just disappeared. How many of you have had that issue happen? Um, and I would love to hear your speculation on this one. It happened because the person that left the review for you did something naughty. That could definitely have, if Dale reviewed your book back in the day, yeah, you probably uh, got, got a loss. Okay, so it's one of three reasons is what Amazon says. They rev the review didn't meet our posted customer review guidelines. We already kind of went through some of those really fast. Uh, two, the review was removed by the customer who wrote it. Oh, there you go. Never thought about that. Maybe they just decided to retract and said, yeah, you know, I'm out of here. Before. We discovered that multiple items were linked together on our website incorrectly. Reviews that were posted on those pages were removed when the items were separated on the site. Ah, oh, there you go. So we can only discuss specific customer review removals with the person who originally posted the review. So if you see a review that's missing, you can't get a hold of them and say, hey, can I get a hold of dude uh, and ask him what's up if everything's okay? For some reason, there's this whole privacy thing that they like to honor. Um, any other questions as we're going along? Please stop me if, if for some reason um, you do see anything. Yeah. The, our arc is through Patreon. That really seems to work well for us. Do you see anything wrong with that? Martian Beast asked that. 
Your uh, Amazon, uh, or excuse me, Amazon, your advanced reader copy teams through Patreon. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't imagine so. Advanced reviewer copy uh, teams, as far as I know, uh, Amazon still encourages advanced reader copy teams. Uh, they're okay with that. It's just coaching them up to where, getting it to where it works in your favor. You know, you're not. Well, he's getting money from it, so technically, it might be. But it's. Eh. It's the other direction, though. It's not like he's paying them. That's true. They're, They're paying good. him for the privilege to be on the advanced re reader copy team. So, if anything, I mean, mm, I I'd love to hear what you folks think because that's that's kind of interesting. Man, I need to talk to you. <laughs> Getting Patreon, you got your advanced reader copy team working through that, that direction. That That's really smart. I think that's really neat. Uh, just make sure that, you know, you're coaching them up not in getting you the reviews that you, the type of reviews you want. Like, you know, you got to give me four or five star reviews. You know, obviously that's, that's not cool. Uh, but you need to coach them up at least to the extent of understanding what, you know, Amazon does and does not expect. And I think probably the easiest way to kind of cover your tail is just to kind of just give them the ambiguous community guidelines. Do you think all five star reviews is a bad thing? Yes, all five-star reviews is a bad thing. Uh, don't you ever, I mean, question for you. If you see a product or you go to a restaurant and you see nothing but five-star reviews, what's the very first thing you're going to think? Oh, they're fake. Yeah. To me, it, I mean, if it was like three, maybe four reviews, okay. But I've seen some people's books that have upwards of 30 five-star reviews. Something smells fishy and I don't think we're near the uh, coast here. And that's the thing is you really, really need to be very mindful and very careful. It, you know, some of that's out of your hands though. So, uh, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, for instance, oh, here's a good example. Lewis, Lewis Howes. Um, Lewis Howes actually has, wow, 161 reviews and about 93% of them are five stars. But here's the thing though. Lewis builds an ironclad relationship with this following. So I... I don't think that he, you know, did anything wrong. He has followers that love him. I mean, you enjoy him, right? Yeah, he's awesome. And you got you had two of his books, don't you? Because you purchased one at his event. And I got one. No, both of them were for free. Interesting. So see, here you go. Here's here's a great example. Yeah. But sadly, and, you can't review though. <laughs> and he's from this area, so I don't know. I have a special place for Mr. House. Yes, and it probably doesn't hurt that he's he's good on the eyes, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Um, uh, I see Darren asking a question here. Um, only 30. I gained 100 five-star reviews. Well, Lewis Howes, is, uh, you, you guys probably are, are, are working something right. Um, I mean, I guess it's just you need to look at it from a perspective as a customer. No, Here's they're a, not talking about, they're talking about other Something things. different. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, here's the thing is when it comes to having too many five-star reviews, um, having too much could be a bad thing. It could look false, but here's the thing is, trust me, too many five-star reviews brings the trolls out of the woodwork. They're like, yes, this is all paid for. Yes. I've gone through this and I've had some friends in the business that have gone through this where they're like, they've... They've scammed the system. My one-star review is only on them being a scammer. It, you know, there's just some people out there. So trust me, you get too many five-star reviews, you will welcome in some one-star and two-stars that'll kind of balance things out. D Darren did ask a question. I'm okay. Sorry, I got distracted by nice in the eyes. Does Dale recommend <sighs> using CreateSpace paperback to give the reader a PDF copy and a link to the paperback to leave a review, or does he do Kindle first? Uh, preferably, and this is kind of the old school mentality that I'd, I'd learn from, uh, we're talking about sending out the complimentary copies, correct? Does Dale use CreateSpace, i.e. give the reader a PDF copy and a link to the paperback to leave the review on, or does he do Kindle first? It's it, it's going to vary uh, based on the reviewer's preferences, Darren. Uh, um, I stopped doing paperbacks just for that one run of like 50 paperbacks that I sent out. I mean, I was, I mean, 50 paperbacks, they ran me about, I mean, with shipping included, each one of them was about 10, I probably plunked down about 500 bucks on that run only to get about 12 reviews. 
Uh, a couple of them weren't weren't flattering, but thankfully they were honest. I, I prefer the honesty that people come out when I give them the complimentary copies. Believe it or not, I you know I'm not going to be the type of person that needs my ego fluffed. Um, you know, she usually brings it down anyway. So even if I had all these five star reviews, she would she'd correct that anyway. Uh, but uh, go with what is going to be good with your budget. So if you reach out to a reviewer for that honest review or just you know sending out the complimentary copy, um, try to have these three things available when you're reaching out. Have your book in PDF form, have an EPUB, and have it in Mobi. Okay, the reason why you can have those three formats is sometimes there's gonna be some people, I had to turn them down because I didn't know how to do that stuff about a couple years ago. Someone's like, yeah, can I get the Moby of it? I'm like, I don't know, what? What's Moby? Does Isn't he like my cousin? Uh, I really didn't understand what Moby or EPUB or, you know, I knew what PDFs were and I could definitely do that. So uh, recommendation, draft to digital has a free uh, auto formatting tool. If you're not familiar with how to format your document to where it's a PDF, EPUB, or Mopi, Mo, Mobi. Uh, you can go to Draft the Digital. You don't have to publish it. You can literally just upload it there, get everything kind of fixed, and download those three document styles. And the nice thing is you can actually download it with the paperback as well. Uh, if you want to check that out, by the way, it would be so nice if you go through my Refer a Friend uh, link at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash D2D. Yep, and uh, get your account set up there, and that would be awesome. And tell them Dale sent you. Uh, the guys at the Drafted Digital Headquarter likes themselves some Dale. So. Yeah, Shereen, my brain's starting to hurt, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Darren says, this would be a free PDF, no physical copies sent. Then they leave review on the paperback. Then you launch Kindle once you have reviews on the paperback. Yes, that, that actually, Darren, um, and actually this is going to be talked about this coming Thursday. I have a case study that's firing off. Uh, with a gentleman, his name is Riley Morrison. He's actually from West Australia. And um, Riley is just a super guy. He's one of our, our viewers, which by the way, hey, what's up, buddy? Um, any rate, um, we're actually having a case study. He's brand new to this business. And that's actually one of the things that he was doing was he bef he set up his book on pre-order. And about a couple weeks prior to that launching, he launched his paperback. So he had his ARC team in place. And that way, when the paperback was out, people were able to put the reviews over onto the product page there. So that way, once when the ebook fired off, and of course, during that portion, there's already reviews. So bear in mind, it takes about three to five business days for Amazon to connect your paperback and your, um, your Kindle book. And same thing with audiobook as well. Uh, I think it's it might be a little less time when it goes through KDP paperback and KDP ebook. So uh, I'm just kind of used to the create space where they'll do separate pages and then it'll eventually put it together. Uh, make sure your metadata is almost exactly the same. Uh, so title, subtitle, series, everything's got to be the same across the board. Otherwise, those pages will be kept separate unless you go in and actually ask Amazon to merge those together. So that's long answer to pretty much what you're asking is, Pre-order on your Kindle, okay? You set up your paperback a couple weeks in advance uh, of the actual launch of the book. So that way the reviews can slowly but surely come in. And that's one of the nice ways is actually utilizing your advanced reader copy team. And I, I wish I can take credit for this. Um, I'm gonna definitely give credit where it's due and you'll hear it from Riley Morrison this Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm really looking forward to this because Newbie self-publisher. See, see, I've had a newbie self-publisher on here, William May. Big shout out to my buddy there. Um, and But he, it was after he had launched. This one is actually before. And he's already, here's the funny thing is I've already recorded this a few weeks ago. So you'll be able to see live what's happening. So this is the really cool thing is when you watch the interview, you can go into the Amazon Kindle store and see the results that he's having, having with his ebook as well as his paperback. So big thank you out there to Riley. I do appreciate it. Are we going live tomorrow? Are we going live tomorrow? Most likely not. Most likely not. I, I apologize. Um, I just have a lot on my plate right now. And with me trying to put together this course as well as the coaching program and taking Thanksgiving off, uh, we're... I'm just really, really a fool. So, Anthony has questions about creating your own online bookstore. I personally don't have any experience with that, so I don't know if I could be any of assistance to him. 
Right, right. Um, I think Doesn't what you're probably referring to, like a like a Shopify store. Check out a Mecca. Um, Ameka's out. been working on some stuff, and, and he's actually been using Ingram Spark as a distributor. Uh, hopefully, I'm not throwing him under the bus on this one. Um, and he switched paperback from Crate Space to Kindle recently. Not impressed. You like Crate Space way better. I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. Um, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you on this one. I do, I do like Create Space much more. Um, Kitty pay paperback though I won't lie to you it's probably making up about a third of my income coming from my KDP account so I'm not at all disappointed and considering that I think I have altogether 15 paperbacks in my KDP account versus uh, scores we're just gonna go ahead and put it that way um, if I were to guess I would say easily Kindle maybe 80 Kindle books could be more could be less I'm just throwing a number out here, but just kind of just putting in perspective that KDP paperback is definitely viable. Uh, it's still in its beta phases. I imagine, Anthony, that it'll probably iron out in due time. Hopefully by the time, speculative, by the time that they merge CreateSpace in with KDP paperback, speculative here, folks, um, they'll they'll have that quality issues ironed out because that that would really stink if they give us these inferior paperbacks um, because i haven't purchased any yet from them um anthony just says think epic and shireen i know you're new to this but not many people will share their pen names i'll tell you that right now yeah there's well it's funny, actually. Um, here's a very fun fact for you. Uh, Steve Scott, and those of you familiar, uh, drop it inside the chat. Steve Scott, he's actually self-publishing um, one of the big experts in our field. And uh, I tried to bring Steve over here to an interview, but unfortunately, he politely declined and said that his priorities are elsewhere right now. And that's not me you know, being facetious or, or talking down on him. Uh, but uh, I just noticed my screen is just slightly off over here. Did you see that? It's gonna drive me crazy. Look at that. That's okay. It's I I know I'm getting all anal retentive on my stuff, but uh, Steve Scott actually is not his real name. Nope. Nope. It's not his real name. Actually, I'd found that out in uh, one of his uh, authority publishing uh, podcasts. Uh, so, yeah, you, you're gonna. It's gonna be really really tough. And uh, admittedly, I'll tell you this: that I have a number of pen names myself. So a lot of people are like, "You haven't published a fitness book in a while." I haven't published a fitness book in a while. So we're just going to go ahead and leave that one at that. There's some things I think that I, I feel that I can keep close to myself. Um, and it's not just, you know, me trying to protect my niche. I'm showing you my prize fighter. You know, when I come out here with the Dale L. Roberts brand, that is my prize fighter. That's the thing that brings in the cheddar here. So, um, yeah. Anthony was thinking of using Think Epic to sell books. Interesting. We're getting on a lot of different topics. Yes, yes. Let's. You want to close it out? I'm going to start to close it out. I just want to kind of just flip through here real quick. There's a couple other things. Um, how do we remove a review for my book or report a review that violates the Amazon community guidelines? Um, I've already kind of told you already about the report abuse button. And they also even talked about was this review helpful to you? If answer no... Uh, you can let us know why the review is inappropriate. Um, so here's the deal is, um, and this is white hat, okay? You can't tell people, go over and downvote this, okay? You just can't send somebody to a one-star review and say, I need you to downvote this. That is completely against guidelines according to them. But you'll find if you've got yourself a good following. This is something that I've done is... I'll take that one star review and I am not afraid to post that up onto a fan page and say, here's one of my latest you know, one star reviews. This is interesting. What do you think? Um, and typically the funny thing is, is people will see that and it will start conversation. It'll get it to where people are talking and I get even more feedback beyond. So some people will look at that one star review and maybe expand on it and say, well, I can see how they feel that way. But for the most part, you get a devout, uh, devote devoted following, what's going to end up happening is they're going to go over to that that review and they're going to hit that thumbs down. Or they might even offer a rebuttal that's kind because a lot of people that I associate with and as well as I believe my fan base of the fitness readers um, are very kind people. They're very nice. They're very positive. Um, I tend to not to, to attract the trolley type people. So that is one of the ways that you can kind of uh, get it to where 
you're not coaching up people or sending them and telling, hey, go vote this one down. But the nice thing is, is your your readers have your back. Um, and of course, don't forget, you can downvote that too. That is completely legit. You can definitely downvote something. Is there anything I can do if I disagree with a customer review on my book? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I didn't give you a chance to answer on that one. That's okay. If you believe the customer review violates the customer review guidelines or doesn't seem genuine, you can report the review as inappropriate. Below each review, you'll find the question that asks, was the review helpful, blah, blah, blah. You already know this. I've told you about the report abuse button, but here's the thing is, you need to start looking at it this way. Is it worth your time to scour and scrape through every single review and report abuse? Because there's gonna come a point to where you need to understand that there are some things that are going to move the needle. Writing a new book, getting some reviews, going on podcasts, um, doing a collaboration with somebody on a video, uh, doing guest blog posts. That's going to move the needle. But when it comes to those one-star reviews, okay, you're just stacking pennies at this point. If you're going through and reporting every single one that you don't agree with, you're stacking pennies. Yeah, you'll make a little bit of money. Yeah, you'll probably maybe protect your book, but sometimes Amazon disagrees with you and they'll go, nah, now we're good. And sometimes, they, most of the times, they don't even respond back to report abuse. Um, and last but not least, how do I change a review that I've written? And it says, just visit your profile, click the CL reviews link, and on the next page, you'll find a link to edit your review, but you guys don't need to know that. So in any event, uh, any further questions? No, we're good. Awesome. Very, very good. Well, all right. Uh, remember, today it has been a lot of fun, and this was something that was suggested. We have about another week and a half before our next live stream. Uh, that would be myself and my wife here. I will be on this Saturday with the Mecca Osai at 10 a.m., so if you want to tune in uh, this Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, make sure that you mark your calendar. Remember, this stream has been brought to you in part by AppSumo Briefcase. AppSumo puts out exemplary products, and some of them will help take your business to the next level. I personally can to attest, attest to many, many products. One of them that is inside the briefcase is the missing letter. Love me some missing letter. It is awesome. It's one of the ways that I'm able to manage my social media and not go crazy at the same time. So you can find out more information about the AppSumo briefcase by going over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash briefcase. They are running a big special right now for anybody getting an annual plan. I don't want to give too much details because then it sounds like I'm pushy and salesy. And quite frankly, I'm not feeling like being that. Hey, if I'm going to be pushy and salesy about anything, I want to mention to you that you can get exclusive content if you head over to patreon.com slash selfpubwithdale. For $1 a month, you get yourself a backlog of well over 200 videos as well as some upcoming content. I'm going to be posting some videos on how to use GIMP and how to design covers for your books. So I see you smiling over here, grinning big. It didn't pop up in my chat. Oh, your live chat disappeared. Why are we so awesome? Why are we so awesome? Why are you so awesome? Go ahead, say it. Say it. No, no, Dad. Wrong dog. Wrong dog. dog. All right, very good. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, let's see some thumbs up. There's quite a few of you in the stream. Thumbs up. And if you're watching this later on, hit that thumbs up. And if you don't like me, then by gosh, get that thumbs down so you stop watching my content. Oops, did I just reveal what happens when people put the thumbs down? Oh my goodness, hit a thumb either way, I appreciate it. And of course, if you enjoyed it, make sure that you share this with somebody else into self-publishing too. And meantime, it's been Self-Publishing with Dale and Kelly. And we'll see you soon.